Okay, started recording. Good morning from a uh, still locked down Leicester over to Marcia in Starbridge. Um, how are you doing? Hi. Oh, I'm okay. Morning. Not bad. <laughs> Not bad. Enjoying the not so good weather. <laughs> <laughs> but, but still still enjoying your freedom unlike unlike Leicester um yeah so I am morning. doing a lot of more cleaning though than usual <laughs> yeah. so um this morning um Marcia and I who've known each other a long time are going to talk about her journey um that's one that many people have contemplated along the way or particularly might be contemplating at the moment which is changing from one part of the profession to another, in Marcia's case, from being a jobbing, performing, touring dancer to the work that she's doing now with her own company, Emmy Dance. So do you want to tell us a little bit about Emmy Dance as it is now? And then we'll go all the way back to the beginning of the story and explain how you got there, because it isn't a simple leap, is it? Not at all. Um, so yeah, the story, it, you know, it, it basically started with me um, always wanting my own company. Um, you know, being a dancer back in the day, I, I thought, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tour, I'm going to train, you know, I'm going to do everything that I wanted to do um, when I was younger. And then I thought one day, why can't I have my own company? And I was actually in the bath at yeah, the time. With, with uh, you know, just talking to my husband, just relaxing. <laughs> Obviously, he wasn't in there. <laughs> but but um, I said, why can't I have my own company? And I heard him shout to me, saying, you can. So why don't you? And I thought, I was, yeah. Yeah, I why not? I always find that really in interesting that we often harbour uh, an ambition for a while, but there's always one crystallising moment. And it's often a very unexpected one, like in the bath or in the car or going for a walk. Yeah. And you say, yeah, I'm going to do it. And it sounds like it was also very important that you have around someone around you that says, yes, you can, or why not? Yeah, exactly. I mean, that support's always been there anyway. When I met my husband, I was um, a dancer with Ace Dance and Music. So he, he kind of knew what, what, what I wanted to do anyway, um, you know, after that, that stage of touring. But, you know, I, I had to make that leap almost to, to find, find a new path for myself because I'd been a teacher, I'd been a choreographer, A, within the company and also when I, when I left the company. So, I just wanted to work for myself as well, have my own brand, my own name, and also give to people who are basically in the same situation as I was when I was little. You know, I, I grew up in Thirsk. Um, my dad was in the army, um, and we mo actually moved to Thirsk from Germany because I was born in Germany. Um, went to school over there everything and then as we got to thirst the dance kind of was my passion but yet my parents being um caribbean based from grenada you know they didn't know anything about you know putting somebody in a dance class or where to find them um but luckily my dad knowing many 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 people <laughs> within Yorkshire, <laughs> um, he found somebody and they said to him, oh, there's a dance class, which is in Thirst Town. Um, so it was called the Mandini Showstoppers. And they basically taught people to dance, but not through technique as such. So it wasn't a ballet class or a contemporary class or a modern class. It was basically everything together, you know, move this way, five, six, seven, eight, <laughs> get down on the floor and perform and act at the same time. And it was, gr it was great. You know, I did singing, um, acting, like I say, and dancing. I was the, the little girl in my little tights. 
I had my first pair of ballet shoes, but obviously I didn't know what ballet <laughs> really was. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I, I just yeah, I was going to say it sounds like there was a lot of joy in your in your yeah. own early youth dance experiences, and I take it that's something you're wanting to bring now in in the work that you do. Um, but there were there was also that as you were just getting into it then about the ballet shoes, it led to a moment of challenge when you did a very memorable audition for Northern School, uh, <laughs> and yeah, and and that's yeah. maybe one of the challenges you're trying to meet through your work now. So, but do do tell us the story. Oh well, yeah, the Northern School of Contemporary Dance, brilliant school. Um, I I loved every minute of it while I was there, um, but. Before that, before I got there, I went to Harrogate College where I studied um, a BTEC, actually a first diploma and then a BTEC national um, diploma. And there was one, I remember my dance teacher there. Oh, she was, she was amazing. There were two of us in the class who really loved dance and she could see that we were passionate about it. And she actually came to me and gave me a leaflet which was the the original um phoenix dancers on the front of the cover and she said why don't you go to this school why don't you audition and i thought oh my gosh there's an actual school where they go to train <laughs> dancers so i applied for it but i applied to be on the degree course now, when I went for the audition, um, I didn't know anything. Um, they put me in a ballet class. Everyone was turning, you know, they were saying, Soutenu. Now, I didn't know what Soutenu was. <laughs> you know, so I'd have one girl facing me as I was doing the ballet audition. <clears throat> pirouettes were fine. I could pirouette, but I just didn't know the terminology. <laughs> so, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> something in my throat um but I, you know I just turned and, and and turned and then I had a contemporary class but again I didn't know what contemporary was uh so in that class I actually fell over <laughs> during the audition and I sat there <laughs> thinking oh my gosh Marcia you are you're not getting in here what you know what's going on so I sat myself down in the corner looking down at my my number <laughs> thinking do you know what you've got to now do your um your solo so I got in there and I thought just go for it forgot my solo completely but I thought do what do what you do just feel the music and dance so I span I span I did the splits I did everything I did body popping me and my me and my brother when we were younger we used to have out the you know the cardboard in the garage especially when we lived on um, the army barracks um, and we just used to create routines and dance and then yeah all that just popped into my head during my audition and it was at the end of that that um, um, Alison Beckett came to me, uh, who was in the audition, and she uh, said, called out all the numbers, and I thought, oh gosh, you know, there's no way. But she asked me to stay behind. She finally called my number, and she suggested that I audition for the foundation course with uh, run by Shirley Jacobs, and she said there you can learn what ballet is what contemporary is you know what choreography is um so i studied for a year with shirley and she actually prepared us to audition again for the degree course because by that time you know they they, tra they train you to, to be a professional dancer from the offset and uh, you know, I'll never forget that. That is just a highlight for me because I feel if I didn't have that training, uh, you know, I had I had my my own kind of training where I wasn't taught, but 
I kind of knew I could do certain certain elements of things. But yeah, I, I auditioned for the degree course and I got in straight away. So I was there for four years, um, training every day and and then working in between, obviously. <laughs> because <laughs> you've got to got to kind of try and support yourself as well um so I was working in between doing commercial work um and then waking up and training very early in the morning again <laughs> so it was that's ongoing the army, that's, that's the army discipline yeah. isn't it you said you, you, it, yeah. your dad used to make you you and your siblings do um assault courses oh oh yes my, yeah. my when we lived yeah we lived in Allenbrook Barracks um, and my dad was a, basically a, a PT as well as being a sergeant in the army so he would used to say get up you know you're not, you, you, you're not watching TV <laughs> so we used to get on our bikes ride down to the gymnasium um, there was always activities in the gymnasium so we do gymnastics not like gymnastics is now we never had all of the equipment we might have had maybe a vault uh, parallel bars but that was it um there might have been a squash court that you could use but there was also the assault course outside so we used to get on that my dad used to say okay go complete complete that assault course <laughs> But we've always been a physical family, you know, and a musical family at the same time. My brother is, um, he used to be in a band called New Flesh. Um, so he's always writing songs and all, we used to sing together also and, and dance um, together. So yeah. we've always Some been physical. Yeah. There were many foundations for a dance training, although yeah. you talked about that moment of not knowing the language, but you knew the language of fitness, the language of music. And I think most yeah. importantly, from what you were saying about um, your, your first experiences, the, the joy. Um, yeah. I just want to draw together some of the ingredients that I heard in, in that story. And I think we have to be really grateful to that person who pulled you aside and said, I see you, I see what's great great in you i see past yeah. the supposed lack of formal language because otherwise we wouldn't have somebody who then went into the industry and is now giving back today yeah I yeah so many dance stories i hear an inspiring yeah. teacher of not knowing that it was something that you could do for a job from your family but somehow yeah. stumbling into that of mm. Um, a, a tricky audition process and of meeting that it's a spoken language really like you say you could do it physically it's just yeah. you've not heard those things called that stuff before um, yeah. and, and how that how that can be a barrier but I also heard self-determination you have that word with yourself and it's it's yeah. beautiful it's like a real Billy Elliot, yeah. Elliot moment or for those of us that are a bit older a real flash dance <laughs> moment when you go well I'm just gonna yeah. dance only yeah. that was my that was my flash yeah. dance moment and, yeah, yeah. and you know I've, I've i've had other moments like that because i used to do a, a lot of athletics as well and me and my brother you know he used to do the english school games and i would go along and watch but we would also go to training camps like carnegie and things like that where we would because we we're in the athletics team so we were all, always competing and, you know, if you're not sprinting fast enough, you need to move those legs faster. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so, yeah, fitness, fitness and training was always a, a love of mine. And, you know, the dance, I think I, I've been able to do what I love and not a lot of people can say it that. Is. And I just, I just think, yeah. you know, you, you've got you've got to do what you love otherwise what's you know what's the point of of being you you know everyone has their own you know their own journey so it's creating that journey you know you've got to set your goals and that's what I'm trying to do now trying to set those goals to to build build my brand and 
and yeah you know and it sounds like also pass on those values because i was going to yeah. ask thinking about that whole training of yours now what joys are you going to keep and what what challenges do you think young people have now and how are you helping them to meet them so that they don't have to go through that audition moment that you did yeah so um i mean the reason i set up the company um in the beginning was for dancers to perform you know they hadn't got the chance to perform before you know they've been to auditions or they have somehow got caught up in the teaching side of things when they were trained to perform on the stage um so i, I started with one male dancer um giuseppe and he was actually a lecturer well i know actually i lie he he came into my class and i, I taught him um while i was working in kidderminster college and then later on he was a lecturer he actually runs um, the dance course in kidderminster now and i thought let me make a solo i asked him do you want to make a, a solo you know i'll choreograph it and we'll perform it so i looked um i spoke to dance fest uh, who are a company based in worcester and I've known Dance Fest for a long time, Rose Beeston, she's amazing. Um, and well, her whole team are amazing, to be honest. Um, but yeah, I, I asked them if I could, they could, um, he could perform at a platform events of theirs. So that's where it all started really, with the one male dancer. And now, I mean, we have six dancers um, to have graduates and, the others are lecturers um, so as and when they perform when we find the performances for them whether it be outdoor performances festivals or platforms it's just showcasing the work and the choreography um, of so an idea that I had so you're providing a space for the community of professionally trained dancers around yeah. you who are yeah. in other of who are teaching so they're part of the profession but yeah. don't have that scope to perform um, yeah exactly and, and it's the same with the youth, the aspect youth company. To the company as well yeah so the youth company um i actually started with three three youth dancers um mm -hmm. and i thought to myself well why can't i have a youth company <laughs> i've got so the professional company yeah and you know the professional company i found for me when i saw a professional dancer i the first dancer i saw on stage was um sharon donaldson who is now sharon watson um who uh was the owner of phoenix dance company yeah um now and, the head of know, northern school when and now trained. the head of northern school <laughs> yeah so she is a person who you know i've always looked up to and i've got a lot of advice um from her even when i started this company i were kind of went in her office booked a meeting <laughs> and um i said how do you start a, a professional company a successful one <laughs> and we kind of laughed um and joked a little and i just kind of wanted that yeah, that, that information of how to start. So, you know, I've had a lot of, a lot of meetings and a lot of guidance from um, many people who I've known throughout the years of my, of my training. So from when I was 19, because I didn't start training until I was 19 um, in Northern. So, you know, it was a quick, a quick turnaround um, to where I needed to be um but yeah when i when i went there she kind of said this is maybe this person you need to speak to um and it kind of went from there the the youth group kind of grew after yeah. after that but i wanted also to have something in the area because where i live within the black country there, there's a lot of dance schools 
but there isn't um, anything like what we do, um, I'd say, and also run by a female black choreographer, you know, that, um, that has, uh, I've had African, I'm based in African contemporary ballet, you know, I learned African and contemporary, the mix together with ace dance and music. Um, so I kind of wanted to bring that element and my commercial background to the studio and blend everything together to create a strong versatile company that you know is where students could go to auditions and they could know how to do ballet they could know how to do contemporary they could know how to do commercial salsa african things like that so yeah they're versatile they're not just stuck in one one lane um and that's why the professionals are in the same class as the youth at the moment, because I find they learn from each other. You know, the, the professionals are there. If they see anything incorrect, you know, if they think there's going to be some sort of injury because of the positioning of the dancer, the, the young dancers who don't really know how to hold their, their body or their frame yet, then they are there to correct them as well because you know you're only one person if yeah. you've got 25 which i have about 25 people in the class of dancers coming from birmingham sometimes um you know i have the the youth company so yeah it, it's just grown they're there to help and assist at the same so time it's, it's so we're working as a cohort yeah. It's almost kind of cross-generational that we don't always think about cross-generational generations yeah. of, of dance. So the um, a word that came to me when you were talking then was aspirational. How it, how important it is to have aspirations. You seeing Sharon as a young dancer yeah. who inspired you. The um, the younger dancers seeing your your dancers who are teachers and you who've been a professional it's really important to have to, to have those examples right in front of you all the time and so yeah. and, uh, also a really important th thing i heard there was start small it started with one comment in the bath and then it started with one guy and one solo yeah. and then it started with three dancers and it grew but i think my the big question everyone will want to know so Oh, and you had a lot of advice uh, um, along yeah. the way. You weren't afraid to ask ask your peers, people who've yeah. done it before. That sounds quite important mm -hmm. as well. But how did you grow it from one guy to three? How did people hear about what you did or get on board? Yeah. So um, obviously I've always had a Facebook page, which actually Gail Parmel set up for me um, when we were on tour <laughs> many, many so years ago. Something like 2000 and how well, what was it? 2000 and I'd say three, four, maybe. Um, oh no, actually, maybe 2006. <laughs> um, so yeah, she set that up for me, and um, then with that, I thought, well, I've got this Facebook page, why don't I just start posting some pictures? So you know, I've always done pictures um, with, uh, with Ace and the other companies that I've been in. Um, and I thought, okay, I'll take the, 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 my own photos of my first dancer. So I took a few, put them on my Facebook and started getting some like, likes for it. And that, that was it really. I, I thought, okay, I need, I made a list. I need an Instagram, I need a business page. Um, and I, I went to my flyer guy, I call him. <laughs> and he's based in Starbridge. And I basically bought him a packet of biscuits and said, help, I need help. <laughs> because I knew, his, I knew his dad because when my computer broke I was always taking my computer to his dad and I don't know he he decided to open up um uh need flyers which is also based in Starbridge and 
you know, he, he created this as such. And he was um, also guidance, guidance for me. So he was like, you need to do this, you need to do that, you need to do that. And I just went off and did it. So you know, no one, no one else is going to do it for you. So yeah. I, do my, I do my own social media. Um, because obviously in my situation, I, my dancers come to me and they pay for a session, you know, they pay for a class. But ultimately, my dancers do it for the love of it because I'm not a funded company. You know, everything I've done yeah. within those two years, I've done myself um, with the help and guidance of people that I know in the industry. Um, it sounds like, so, yeah, it sounds like communication's been key. You, you had yeah. something, uh, you put it on social media, you realised it was reaching people and then you're able to gather people together through that. But it sounds yeah. like they also sound like very similarly motiv motivated people as well. And so, and so yeah, it all yeah. starts happening. Yeah. Yeah, and also, you know, I had to think kind of outside the box as well. I kind of did I full circle say, and yeah, came back to, yeah. to my Caribbean roots at the same time because obviously my parents live in, in Grenada. Um, there's also dance companies out there. And when I, when I went back there last year to visit, I thought, well, why can't I connect with the dance company over there and give something back to the community? Um, so I went in, I did a workshop with Conception Dance Company. I've been um, speaking as well to um, Imagination Dance Company in Grenada. So now I'm looking at how we can make that connection and how, you know, we can collaborate together. So I'm educating their students and I'm also learning myself about their way of working over there. You know, it was very hot teaching over there. <laughs> I was yeah. sweating after the first exercise. <laughs> but, you know, I'm, I'm hoping that there's a long standing relationship there. And when I started the, the Graham classes, because Graham is something that has diminished over the years and I feel I, I loved it so much and I think there are people out there who who still enjoy it but yet it's been taken away so my class is based on the foundation of Martha Graham technique but also with the mixture of elements of different the different styles um, because that that I feel is a a core element into into the strength you know you have got the pilates and the yoga which, which assists and stretching is everything <laughs> but at the same time and um dancers need to be strong to maintain a long career in the dance world and that's what i'm trying to to do to educate the youth to be healthy strong dancers at the end of the day and so they can take it away when they, if they become teachers, whether it be, be in prime, primary schools, you know, I've, I've worked with four, five-year-olds as well, you know, because when we were in ACE, we were taught by them, um, even though I did, I did do education, dance as education in Northern for my dissertation, um, ACE gave us a grounding to, to, talk, to talk about how you you know how you teach and develop children from an early age in dance to the professional side so from so primary just... to secondary to to dance schools to dance institutions so yeah so you've not just um, learned to dance technically and learned to perform, but you found yourself in a company that also had a very strong community and participatory yeah. side. So you yeah, were able yeah. to learn what that was and how to teach in that context. I was going to say, actually, I kind of, we stopped when you got to your training. Would you like to pick up with your, um, your professional life and what yeah. you did there, what you gained from it and, 
and maybe how that how did that end and how did you okay, yeah. become yeah. um what you uh, where you were sat in that bath <laughs> yeah so I, I think after i graduated i actually had a moment of okay what what do i do now because back then you weren't prepared to go out into the real world as a professional dancer you had to make your own way um so you've graduated i had about i had about two weeks and i thought okay well i might as well train and rjc also based in leeds um uh, they have their own company at the mandela center in leeds now uh, they were basically for two three 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 guys um and i trained with them for two solid weeks and in strength <laughs> and i mean strength they used to make us do press-ups um Dinapoli and edward used to make us box so we do boxing um we do contemporary training uh we do handstands which i was never very good at <laughs> the handstand part walking on hands straight across the room um but strength training and one day they found out that Ace were looking for a dancer in Birmingham. So I, they said, why don't you audition um, and go over there? And I'd never been to Birmingham before. You know, I'm a Yorkshire, I was a Yorkshire girl. So <laughs> I was staying that side of things, but I kind of ended up in Birmingham and I did an audition for them. And that's how I became a company member of ACE um, and then I toured with them for about six years, six, seven years, um, you know, doing the education side. We toured all over the country and then from there I went to state of emergency when I was on a break for about three months. So I, I went into the state of emergency <laughs> company, worked with yourself. <laughs> yeah. um, and Jose Colstad, Jennifer Jean Charles, um, Nelva Henry. And then after that, um, oh, also Joanne Bernard, who uh, was artistic director for um, Tavasiva and is now universal director for Phoenix. <laughs> yeah, we Small used world. to director for Phoenix. So we used to dance together also, um, me and Joanne, uh, in ACE too uh, so you know we've all known each other uh just from being in leeds you know around that area and then from there i went to norway and i worked in norway for well, a couple of months uh with zeze kolstad who was in ace too because she moved back and started a company called visa productions and even though you know i didn't know the language <laughs> at all and i thought well i'm i'm not doing anything now so i might as well go and try and experience this so being in a different country not knowing the language um i just threw, threw myself in there it was difficult uh but obviously you love dance so i stayed i learned the piece I even did a bit of a street dance with them, which I learned with another choreographer over there. Um, and then I returned to England after that and went into teaching, teaching with the education group. And I also thought, well, why can't I ring around and offer my services? <laughs> you know, so, I've so done a lot. I've done, I've, I've done a lot in that time. So. One day I rang up actually um, Tamsin Fitzgerald from Two Faced Dance Company and I said, do you, do you want anyone to come and teach for you? And she <laughs> says, oh yeah, you know, we'd love to have you in. So I actually went and worked with um, the boys uh, in Two Faced and I took audition an audition for Tamsin as well in the place. and yeah i just started working for other other companies really um i had a link 
with dance dance exchange so i teach pro class there now and again and and then that fell into um teaching for the cat scheme as well so you know so i think starting this business has also opened up those other avenues as well for me um because of the graham and and no one is really teaching that side too so you have so, something unique to offer uh, yeah 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 and i think the you know it's all about for me learning i'm still learning at the same time as i go along as i build this um so yeah i'm just really trying to, to offer my my knowledge to to people who want it really and did you make a very clear decision that right i'm not performing anymore out on tour it's time to do something different or was it more like you say you just moved into a freelance career job by job yeah i think um for me i felt like i'd done everything that i needed to do um you know i'd been i'd been a professional dancer i'd been a teacher um i i'd done a little bit of I'd, of choreography and i kind of wanted to make my own choreography uh, uh into a full length show with my style mm -hmm. um so yeah i think it it was a, a decision a conscious decision that i'd made to stop dancing i'm not saying i don't miss it because i do <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, was it was yeah. there anything challenging or sad about yeah. that? Yeah, yeah, there is a, a sad. You do have a sad moment where you think, "Oh, I could still do that," you know. Um, but there also comes a point in your in your life where you think, "Okay, it's time to, to change change things up a bit," and also my your body does change as well you know i had a moment where i'd been teaching african class for something like two um two hours non-stop and <laughs> the next day i was hoovering and i i sent my base my stepkids i sent my stepkids off to school and i had my my um, daughter here and i actually bent down in the cupboards and then i couldn't get back up <laughs> <laughs> my back my back had gone into spasm so you know i thought oh gosh what you know what what is this because i'd never had any problems with my back or anything like that and um i, I think that was another thought for me you know i'm i'm 41 years old and you know i just think there comes a time for you where you have a different mindset yeah. so that in toll with yeah. that in toll with injuring you know my back mm -hmm. i thought okay it's time for, it's time for a change your body is telling you something and you have to listen to it it's the same yeah. that we say with the dancers you know don't push through your injury you know if you're injured you need to take the time and be smart about it and and think okay so how can i Put this right carefully and then continue because you know if you do it if you continue you're doing more damage to yourself and your career yeah so absolutely yeah that's what we're, that's what we're also trying to teach teach our dancers to be smart think you know thinkers because when you know we you you dance anywhere when you're when you're younger you <laughs> you throw yourself yeah. everywhere you dance on all sorts of floors but but now we're in a time where more things are available to you to to protect yourself as a an, a freelance dancer so yeah yeah well, that's quite interesting so lots i've heard in, in that story there was about about listening to yourself you'd always had that ambition which you'd listen to you listen to your body when it was beginning to tell you but i think um, that sounds really important that you really felt you'd done lots of the things that you wanted to do. Um, yeah. And you also, I can hear lots of things about how you, you have 
continued to stay connected with and got support from all the communities that you've been, been involved with. So your, the people that you met along the way in your training, your teachers, but also in your own community, like you talked about your brother and family, your flyer yeah. guy, not everything that builds My a music dance. guy. Well, I have a music, music guy. Dance, <laughs> does it? Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. I just, and they're helping. We, yeah, you know, I they're, just they're, went, all, they're all supporting. You know, if I ring my music, my music guy Simon Henley, you know, he's a he's a great great guy. Um, if I want something done with the music, um, and it's funny because I I I live right next to um, the studio, the music studio. Uh, it's just by a shop <laughs> by me, and I saw it and I thought oh, I'm going to ring that and, and see if I can speak to someone. And, you know, we've been friends for two years now because he's been yeah. doing the music for me. And he, you know, he'll be like, oh, just come in. Um, you know, we, we can help each other. So it, it's a two-way thing for me. I, I feel like these people are helping me. And what I try and do is get their name out there as well because you know I, I feel like you've got to support the small businesses around you at the same time as well as trying to build up your own absolutely yeah and I can hear that many things have been exchanged other than money sometimes money yeah. exchanges yeah, sometimes, and it's really important. yeah sometimes really important money you know I do but, um, if I, I still, if I've got flights yeah. yeah if I've got flies and stuff yeah I will I'll pay him <laughs> of course but because he's got a business to run at the same time but but you know they do go above and beyond sometimes it sounds so, like you never you never ever showed up empty-handed like you offered your skills you had a clear sense of what you had to offer and a clear sense of what you needed in exchange and that that was fair and lots of the people i know that have been successful in anything really have that kind of fair-mindedness that that balance it's a it's a balance between a sort of confidence in what you had to have to offer and knowing that you that you have got something to offer from someone even if you're starting out like you say you know you're still yeah. learning but you still know what you're bringing with you and then you're also mindful of what other people might need from you so it sounds yeah. like you have not just that you have um lots of good relationships around what you do as well as the thing itself and i just um, wondered if we as we come back into the present and what and what yeah. emmy dance is doing now and its aspirations now um, yeah had some very so, interesting conversations <laughs> around the commonwealth and i wondered if you perhaps yeah. you might talk a bit about fleur who um who supports we've talked about yeah. all your supporters but she's a really important one as well and i think she, that's an interesting yeah. relationship for people to know about yeah um well fleur is uh one of one of my that she started off as me personal training her because you know obviously i i started doing private as well to assist dancers with audition practice and just to strengthen them um so i started training fleur and we went to the gym and she started coming to the class as well and then um, became what part of the company, one of the dancers. Um, so, because she'd always wanted to dance. And yeah, we just became good friends. And she also loved what I, I was trying to build. So she fell in <laughs> to the role of administrator for me. So, you know, applications, any any kind of thing that I I want to do or or people I want to speak to she'll contact and you know we kind of work together on on the brand so not like not being funded you know it's a it is a difficult situation but um, I just feel like oh we we've got this far doing it without um for now it would always help <laughs> i must admit um and it would be great to have um but you know if that doesn't happen we just keep keep going driving forward um 
so yeah she is a big part of of the company and 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 the building of it at the same time so and um, um, tell, tell us about the conversation that you had with Ray Dean about Commonwealth oh yeah so, <laughs> so the the idea is um, to be part of the Birmingham Commonwealth Games uh, so we are in talks with Ray Dean at the moment and I kind of wanna I've been doing films as well at the same time due to this COVID-19 situation because obviously everyone's had to change their way of teaching you know I've gone to do I've started Zoom classes as well for the company um, so I do that during the week um, but during that I thought okay why not make a film about the situation of being trapped and alone so me and the dancers uh each did well i basically instructed the dancers to see if they could do something within their houses and i got my little camera out and i filmed around the black country and basically a guy i know rob uh from when i taught kidderminster and he just said to him, can you put this together for me? And I created a film called Disconnect. So I basically sent that to Ray Dean as well, just to show her the work that we're creating on our own and how we could be involved um, within, within the Commonwealth Games. You know, my link to Grenada being a Commonwealth com country as well would bring aspects into what they what they wanted so we, we're kind of looking at the black country uh the bumble hole in particular which is a reservoir in netherton so what i want to do is build a maybe a site specific um project where it looks at the black country and um with interviews from the Caribbean, from my uncle, um, from the Windrush era, straight through. So, looking at also the protests that went on. Um, so yeah, and bring it to bringing it to life and educating, you know, the youth and also adults about what went on within that time. So yeah, that that's that's the ideas that we're talking about at the moment. So it's all ongo it's an ongoing thing, but I'm also making another film. I made a film with the youth recently, uh, called Overload. And that is about being in lockdown and how the pressures of having to learn independently um affect the younger generation so that should be coming out soon i hope i'm hoping it's going to be um stream uh with flexus uh, flexus are also um a great company uh flexus dance collective um they're based in wolverhampton run by katie Sterin, and you know she has been a great support as well of our work um so she you know she actually streamed disconnect on her website for us just to so it could reach more people so this next film that i'm doing um i don't have a title yet for it <laughs> but it is based within um the black without in the black country and its natural surroundings uh so yeah every everything's linking linking to the uh the main event which is mania which is um a piece that i've been working on for about a year um which i'm hoping if things go according to up to plan will premiere in um, october um but we just don't know the situation you know what's going to happen with the theaters at the moment uh, so everything that I'm doing now will link back to a theatre production. 
So a lot of, lot of things up here in the mind, but it's just about getting it out there. You know, filming wasn't something that I'd really thought about doing before. Um, I knew I wanted to do something later on down the line eventually, but uh, having this, this situation upon, you know, the whole of the country has basically pushed me uh, in faster into that that area and to be honest I'm loving I'm loving it I'm, I'm really loving making these films and seeing how you know we can show people what we have exactly where we live yeah. you know we, we take it for granted because you get caught up in the rat race of life you don't really have time to appreciate what's around you I was going to say a thread that I picked up through that conversation was about so it's really important to be ambitious and go far and fast, but also to look at what's on your own doorstep. You were next door to a dance studio. You're celebrating the people around you. You, you, you and other dancers support each other. Um, yeah. And again, it's, it's back to community. And I, um, I love the um, your Windrush idea and the connection to Grenada. It brings you all the way full circle back yeah, to yeah. Roots, but with everything you've collected on your journey. And I think if I'm taking anything from this conversation this this morning, it's about. I sometimes think when I'm talking to younger dancers that they think there's a miraculous moment when you get some money and then it all changes. <laughs> but it strikes me that when you were talking to me about your conversation with Raydeen, she was saying, oh, fantastic. It's about showing that you're ready, that you, yeah, can, you yeah. can put all the bits in place. And I know other yeah. companies like this, you can, yeah. you can still put many, many of the bits in place and still experience the joy in the community and, yeah. and the support and the exactly. success and the performances. And if you've got all those bits in place, there's a moment uh, when mm. someone recognizes exactly like they did in that audition they yeah. recognize your talent in the audition and it sounds like th there's a moment happening where people are recognizing that in your business sense when you're good to go and you, yeah. you know your story is one of adapting you know adapting and taking chances yeah. and that's really yeah. it is about it is, it's, definitely, inspiring. it's definitely about taking chances and throwing yourself into you know what you, into into the river really. yeah. <laughs> you know you're throwing yourself in at the deep end um but I think if you don't then you'll never know and you know I had people I had I did have people tell me oh you know things you know won't won't work you know for you know, many years so I think you have to try and make it work and if you don't, you you're never going to know. So and, and trust yourself, and you know, you knew that community. You knew there were dancers wanting to dance because because the, they were telling you. And um, sometimes you don't have to be a marketing expert to know your market, if you know what I mean. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you know, I don't know where it's gonna gonna take us, but I know I'm enjoying what what I'm doing at the moment. I mean, one. One thing Ray Dean did say to us was, "Oh, I thought I actually thought you were a bigger organisation than you are." And that's and, the key. <laughs> and, uh, and I was like, "Well, you know, we are small because we're not actually an organisation. We're not, <laughs> not not funded. It is just me. You know, it's mine. It's my name. At the end of the day, even even when I got married, <laughs> my husband was like, "Aren't you um, a Jones?" <laughs> <laughs> because you know he's Martin Jones and I said to him I I am an Edwards and a Jones at the same time I might be a Jones on paper but I'm an Edwards because I've built my name up for so long I'm not letting go of it <laughs> yeah well, I said yeah. I, you know I love you but I'm not letting go of that <laughs> that is that is my brand and you know the me it's me yeah. so you know I, I i thank my parents for that <laughs> thanks mom and dad for me but yeah that that is that is us that's the brand it, it is what it is isn't it 
I think, that's, it, I think that's a really beautiful message. Stay yourself, stay yourself at the core. And even when your performing career ends, you don't by any means leave all of it behind. It's just a no. circle turning where you it begin a, to yeah. give back is, to the circle. back into that point where you joined it as a as a young person as well. Have you any last yeah. words for anyone thinking about making that leap into the river? Oh, I'd say with, just... With the life belt of friends and support, I think. Yeah, I'd say just do it and um, enjoy it. Yeah, there might be stressful moments and stuff, but that I think that's life. Um, things are there to challenge us. So you must just get on and ride on into the sunset. Because if you don't, then you will never know at the same time. And one thing my, my father always said to me was, follow your, you know, you've got to follow your dream. You've got to follow your dream. And also, don't forget the people who put you where you are or helped you along the way at the same time. So, yeah, you've always got to come back to base. So just go for it. Thank you, Marcia. Thanks for a really You're inspiring. Welcome. You're welcome. Great talk. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you then. Okay.